let's get straight in, shall we, to the strikes. Now, Border Force uh, joining in the fun. I suppose it begs the question, who is running the country? Is it the unions or is it you? Well, of course, we're running the country, but the uh, unions are um, disrupting aspects of public service, which is incredibly disappointing. I mean, you know, we've been through a lot as a country and we still continue to go through uh, trying to recover from the pandemic and obviously deal with inflation and the rise in energy costs, which all of us are dealing with. Um, so it is incredibly disappointing, particularly over Christmas. Um, you know, this was our... Uh, time to see family and friends. We don't get those times very often, so it's very disappointing. Uh, but of course, we'll do our best uh, working with the military to mitigate the impacts. Prime Minister, just get on with these tough new laws that he keeps talking about. Well, yes, I mean, they are going, um, you know, they are going to go through. I think they've been introduced Another year. and they are going to go through uh, Parliament. They do take time. I mean, th that is that is true. They do take time. But we do have, I think, uh, uh, 2,000 military personnel who are uh, trained and, uh, you know, uh, ready to, to support us. But, yeah, it's incredibly disappointing. But Secretary of State Grant Shapps was talking about this legislation in October. They were talking about it earlier in the year. We've known these, these strikes have been accelerating in their volume. Why is it taking so long? Why is there no legislation already before the Commons? Well, I mean, these things do take time. Obviously, we've had a little yeah, bit of a disruption in power since our programme as well. Secretary of State, you've been in power since 2019. Yes, but... You've had over two years already. Yes, and, and we're, the, we're, the only part, we're the only party that would introduce this legislation, uh, by the way. Uh, it is important. It is going to be introduced. You always hope not to do this, right? You know, you hope that you can have sensible working relationships, but it looks like, um, you know, there's been a breakdown of those and some of the unions are determined to spoil Christmas for everybody. Mm -hmm. I've got to ask you about the situation in our schools. Uh, nine children now having tragically lost their lives to strep A. I know a lot of parents extremely anxious about the situation. I've spoken to doctors and pharmacists over the last couple of days who say this is a really serious situation. Is the government out of touch? Pharmacists telling us, quite frankly, they cannot get their hands on this liquid suspension, the liquid syrupy form of antibiotics that is suitable for children. Well, there is no national shortage of supply, but of course, when these things happen, you could get some spikes locally. So uh, the NHS are working uh, their way through that at the moment, but there is no national shortage of supply. But of course, it is worrying for parents. I mean, it's your worst nightmare and our, our, our massive sympathies go out to the families who've been impacted by this. It's, it's really uh, every parent's worst nightmare. Uh, but to put it into context, it, you know, it is extremely rare still, but we are urging parents to keep vigilant, uh, to look for the symptoms, fever, headache, sore throat, and a, a rash on the skin. And all the details are on uh, the uh, UK HSA uh, website and they are monitoring very, very closely the situation. But when GPs have been told to blanket hand out antibiotics to any concerned parents, when whole year groups where there are cases are being told to be given antibiotics, we're hearing reports that parents have been given prescriptions, but they're driving from pharmacy to pharmacy to pharmacy with sick children unable to get their hands on it. Are people stockpiling? I mean, how can you say that there is no national shortage, and yet children who need this prescription can't get their hands on it. Well, I think that's what the NHS are working through. I mean, you know, you, you sometimes do get this surge uh, in spe specific uh, spots, but there is no national shortage of supply. That's what we're being, end uh, uh, being told. And there's also uh, supply chains that are uh, also being uh, set up as well. So we just urge people to, um, you know, to, to, to let the NHS work this through. Are you still green? Is it still a green government, Secretary of State? Because Michael Gove's announced the first coal mine in Britain, new coal mine, for 30 years. Um, some of your colleagues uh, are appalled. Well, obviously, we have a fantastic record, actually, on renewables. 40% of our energy now comes from renewables. And we've done a lot uh, over the last uh, 20 years, actually, to, um, to go down that path to be net uh, zero by 2050. I mean, this coal mine is, is very specific. I've actually been to uh, Cleetermoor and um, uh, the area around there, Whitehaven, and there's a lot of local support for this. We've been talking about localism a lot over the last few days in terms of planning. There's a lot of local support for this. There's a lot of jobs that it will bring both direct and indirect and it's very very specific it is not um, for, for, for energy it is specifically coking coal to make steel and by the way to meet our net zero targets we will need a lot of steel to make uh, the wind turbines or the nuclear power station etc so it is uh, you know it's been passed by the Labour 
uh, council. It's been passed three times by the planning inspectorate. And effectively, the choice of, uh, you know, the source of supply of this coking coal is either uh, that mine or importing it from somewhere else. So from a, from a uh, carbon perspective uh, looked at, you know, specifically, uh, it, it actually is probably more efficient to get it uh, out of the ground ourselves. And we will need a lot of steel. But of course, um, you know, people are worried about the signalling, but the signalling, it's still our intent to, you know, phase out coal. Um, and this is a very, very specific industrial use. Yeah, just, people are worried uh, about the signalling. I mean, uh, we lecture steel. countries around the world about coal and, you know, it wouldn't have happened under Boris Johnson, would it? And the uh, COP26 president, Alok Sharma, saying this is a big step backwards. Well, this has actually been um, talked about for a long time. As I say, there's a lot of local support. It's been passed by the Labour Council, by three planning inspectors. Um, and, you know, this is a common sense decision. You know, it's in the north. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to bring brilliant jobs to that area. Um, and as I say, there is a lot of local support around Whitehaven and, and uh, Cleeta Moor for this, for this uh, mine. Secretary of State, today you're announcing um, almost £500 million investment in skills training to try and get more people into jobs. This is to help university and college students. What exactly are you going to be telling us today? Well, it's actually capital equipment. There's about 100 universities and they're all getting uh, money for investment in, in new things for skills and skills training. So that's um, advanced manufacturing. There's uh, health that we've set up uh, in one of them. It's going to buy a residential sort of a mock residential care home to really train the next generation of uh, podiatrists and, and uh, people who will uh, help with elderly care. So there's a lot of different uh, initiatives, but it's really based on skills and skills training and making sure they've got the latest equipment to train on and the latest settings. So we're investing uh, heavily in that. Um, it's, it comes just a day after you'll have seen that report, I think, by uh, which suggested that nearly one in 10 young people, particularly those between 18 to 24, don't have any plans to ever go to work or study. Yeah, well, I think their plans may change over life, but, uh, you know, you do need to work, you do need to uh, study. And basically, most young people do want to get on in life. But, you know, there's there's been a lot of disruption for young people and a lot of people, you know, some people are uncertain about their futures. That's why we're putting a lot of investment. There is you know, 1.255 million job vacancies in the country, a lot of those very high quality jobs. But we need to make sure people have the skills so that they can take those jobs. That's why we're investing in our universities, in our FE colleges um, and, and in our our skills training in courses in boot camps there's a lot of investment in helping people at any age at any stage actually to be able to get the skills they need to get fantastic jobs and you know people work is a, is is very enjoyable actually people do um, you know need that structure that purpose and uh, need money as well you needing money uh, former health secretary Matt Hancock announcing yesterday he won't be standing in the next election rumor has it uh, he was pushed out by his local Tory party Are you able to tell us any more about that no, but I, I think, you know, when he went off into the jungle, it was clear that he probably had a, a different career path in mind for himself. A loss for the party? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's done a, you know, he's done a, you know, being health secretary in the middle of a pandemic is a very difficult thing to do. Um, and, you know, and he, he did that, uh, you know, pretty much most of the way through the pandemic. So, of course, uh, he will have learned a lot through that. And, you know, he, he's uh, he's been a great addition. He's played his part. But, uh, you know, people move on. The, the politics isn't, um, you know, people don't stay in it for for life. Uh, now people tend to do that. I mean, I didn't get elected till I was 49. So uh, uh, a lot of people are either going on to their second careers or coming into politics later in life. Can you imagine yourself in the jungle, Secretary of State? Never, no. I, I couldn't stand one bug, let alone a whole ton of them being tipped over me. No, absolutely not. Uh, I can t safely say that would not be me. We'll hold you to that. Secretary of State, thanks very much, Julian Keegan.